Has your mood been down, depressed? Maybe you're lacking energy, motivation. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at methylfolate for depression and specifically going to look at some of the research behind this, what it means for people with MTHFR and those without MTHFR gene alteration. So again, my name is Dr. Taranella, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know that I make these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom or diagnosis, make these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's happening with your body, with your health. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, health, hormones, etc., click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as treatment for any medical condition or a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at methylfolate for depression. Using folate and folic acid for the treatment of depression is not really a new concept, but the use of methylfolate is fairly new or relatively new. What's interesting to note is that some of the research on methylfolate for depression is in people that don't actually have MTHFR gene alterations. So here's a quick background for those of you not familiar with this concept. MTHFR is an enzyme that all of us have but when it's altered, it leads to alterations in how we metabolize folate, and it renders the person's enzyme less capable of making methylfolate. Giving these people with this gene alteration and the MTHFR enzyme more methylfolate does seem to help in a lot of ways, including fatigue, depression, anxiety, among other things. People with MTHFR alteration clearly do have a reduction in their ability to produce methylfolate. Based on some of the research that I recently came across, it seems that even those without MTHFR gene alteration, but with depression, may benefit from methylfolate. Well, why could this be? Well, there are other genetic alterations that some people may have, such as folate transport gene alterations. And then also, you know, maybe they're just not consuming enough uh, folate in general, including folic acid in their foods. And so there's an overall reduced delivery to the areas that are needed to help with neurotransmitter production. So perhaps these are some of the reasons, but let's take a look at what some of the research says about methylfolate for depression. So treatment-resistant depression is a common cohort of patients that different things are tried on. And for one, they've already kind of maxed out all the things they could try. But for two, if it works on this population, there's a good chance it probably will work on other people with, with depression as well. So in 2010, a study looked at this population and they found that adding methylfolate to a standard therapy for depression, such as an SSRI, was effective at reducing depressive symptoms. In another study, patients were recruited from 124 different primary care practices throughout the U.S. The patients were randomly assigned to receive either methylfolate or placebo for 12 weeks. The primary outcome that the research study was looking at was a change in the Hamilton Depression Rating Scale. This is a common depression scale that's used to measure the severity of depression symptoms. So the study found that the change in the Hamilton depression rating score was significantly greater in the methylfolate group compared to the placebo group, meaning that the improvements were greater. It also found that the methylfolate group was more likely to achieve remission of their depressive symptoms more so than the placebo group. And remission in this case was defined as a seven or less on the Hamilton Depression's rating score. About 48% of the methylfolate group achieved remission versus 32% in the placebo group. Overall, they concluded that methylfolate is effective at improving depression symptoms in a real-world setting, and it was also well-tolerated by the patients that took it. So according to these two studies, it looks like there is some 
benefit to taking methylfolate for depression. There are some other studies that were funded by the maker of Deplin. These had even more positive associations, as you can assume. And Deplin is a prescription slash over-the-counter product that has high doses of methylfolate in it. And so those studies, of course, may have a bit of a conflict of interest, but still it is interesting that there is some findings suggestive of methylfolate being effective at improving depression, even in people that don't have MTHFR. I don't typically give methylfolate to people without MTHFR or some sort of folate deficiency. And even those with MTHFR gene alteration, I usually start slowly and carefully because of the potential for side effects. In the right person at the right time, it can be really, really helpful to uplift mood and stabilize some of the negative thought patterns. If you're thinking about using this methodology for your depression or mood issues, it's important to work with a healthcare provider that knows and understands this particular supplement slash medication. Too much can actually have opposite effect on your energy and mood and well-being. So check out my other videos on MTHFR and methylfolate to get more informed on this topic if you want more information. I'll include a link to some of the studies that I looked at for this video in the description if you want to check those out. All right, so that's all I had on this video looking at methylfolate for depression. If you do have follow-up comments or questions on this topic, drop it in the comment section. Happy to answer your question. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.